What's going on guys, this is Rob and welcome back to another top 10 list, let's get into it. FYI, this video is going to get pretty dark and the number one choice that we have here for the darkest, most disturbing, controversial moments in Marvel Comics is pretty twisted. Starting off the list at number 10 is a story where the Punisher became a black man. So this is a story called The Punisher Final Days. And basically it's a story whereby Frank Castle had been in a prison and in order to escape, he had impersonated the body of somebody else. And so when he got out, he went to a plastic surgeon and instructed that guy to basically make him look unrecognizable. So the plastic surgeon turned him into a black guy. Now he ended up teaming up with Luke Cage and I'm pretty sure he gave himself the name Frank Rook. So nobody would really know who he was. Obviously the writer of the story at the time was immediately kicked off the title and he was replaced with somebody else who basically fixed everything up and kind of got it back to as good as it could get. But this is one of those stories that Marvel Comics doesn't want anybody to know. Having said that, this is about as lighthearted as we get. Uh, it gets bleak over the course of this. It gets very, very dark. <laughs> but coming in at number nine is Captain America eating human flesh. Now this turns our attention to Marvel Ruins and you're definitely gonna see Marvel Ruins again on this list because how could you not? So here's the thing, in this story, we don't directly see it happen. Instead, we basically learn about this by way of Nick Fury. Now one of the things we find out here before Nick Fury takes out Jean Grey and himself is that he actually eats human flesh and he was introduced to it by Captain America. Now we talked about Marvel Ruins before in the last video that we did, and we're gonna talk about it again over the course of these lists if we're focusing on really, really dark content from Marvel Comics, because Marvel Ruins is as dark as it gets. It is the most just dark story, unnecessarily dark, that Marvel Comics has ever made. But basically it's a story where the worst possible scenario that can happen does happen. And in fact, we could literally make a video that's the darkest moments from Marvel Ruins, which would just be a bleak video in and of itself. But the thing about this is that it's a terrible situation and it's pretty much a very dark and bleak depiction of the superheroes as we know them from Marvel Comics. We do have the video here at Comics Explained, we have covered it, feel free to check it out, you'll find a link to it down in the description. But moving on to number eight, and if this doesn't give you any indication of how dark this list is going to get, then nothing else will, Ultimates 3. And the reason why that matters is because we end up learning in the Ultimate Universe that Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, who are brother and sister, are basically banging. It's pretty messed up. And in fact, Wolverine watches it happen because Wolverine's a really weird and twisted guy in the Ultimate Universe. For those of you guys who don't know what that is, the Ultimate Universe was a line of comics introduced by Marvel in the year 2000 that started with Ultimate Spider-Man that was an answer to the question, what would superheroes look like if they were just being introduced? So it's like a modern take on superheroes. The Marvel Cinematic Universe gets most of its material from a combination of the Ultimate Universe comics and the Earth-98 comics. So it's a pretty cool line Line of stories to tell but that one's pretty messed up and it's pretty weird but it's not nearly as dark as the stuff we're going to get into because now we get into the bleak stuff right? it's been light-hearted up to this point it's been like i mean it's a little controversial you know a little suspect right now it gets into the dark stuff so coming in at number seven morlan rips out spider-man's eye and eats it. So for those of you guys who never read a story called Marvel the Other, and I don't know why I'm smiling about this. <laughs> I got a morbid sense of humor. For those of you guys who never read a story called The Other, it basically dealt with the idea that Peter Parker was what was called a spider totem, basically meaning that he represents spiders on like the totem of animals. So like Black Panther, for example, represents the panther on the animal totem, different things like that. Morlun is what's called an inheritor. He's a guy that basically travels around and targets spiders more than anybody else, but basically wants to kill anybody who represents the spider totem so any member of the spider family spider man spider girl spider woman so on and so forth and then consume their energies and in fact he was such a threat that the inheritors became a multiversal team that was tracking down and killing every version of spider-man they could find across the multiverse that's actually the entire basis for the original spider-verse event in marvel comics by dan slott it was a phenomenal story and this one when morlun is facing off against spider-man he beats him within an inch of of his life and then he rips his eyeball out and then he eats his eyeball now peter regrows his eyeball in the next issue but it was a pretty brutal moment when that happened you never really saw things that dark taking place in spider-man comics 
But this leads us into number six, which is a story called The Last Avengers Story. This is a story that initially focused on Ultron, who was always being defeated by the superheroes, taking the means by which the superheroes could be defeated and then putting it in a time capsule. Kane the Conqueror eventually discovers it, travels back to the modern era, and then detonates a nuclear bomb over the Avengers mansion, which kills most all the Avengers who were there. Those Avengers who don't die in this story basically end up just becoming really old and they effectively age out. But Hank Pym, who's basically really fat and old, ends up forming a new Avengers team. But one of the things you learn, which this puts it in the number six spot, one of the things you learn is that in a flashback, there came a point where the Incredible Hulk, who was basically evil, faced off against Tigra and Wonder Man. And what had happened is that in front of Wonder Man, Tigra had attacked the Incredible Hulk, believing she could basically slash his eyes out because she's basically a tiger in terms of how her physical appearance is, as well as like her powers to a degree. The Incredible Hulk grabs her, pulls her in front of him, and then rips her to pieces in front of Wonder Man. Like literally blood flying everywhere. It's chaotic. It's disgusting. But it's one of the most brutal moments that you're ever going to see in Marvel Comics, especially when it comes to the Incredible Hulk. But coming in at number five is a story called The Amazing Spider-Man Shed. And this focuses, and I know a lot of you guys who are huge fans of Spider-Man knew this was coming, this focuses on the lizard, Dr. Kirk Connors, who's basically in more of an animalistic state than anything else, but it shows the darkest version of his character. That the lizard, historically speaking in Marvel Comics, has been depicted as a pretty violent guy. He's done some pretty violent things. In this instance, the lizard goes insane and eats his son alive, and you watch it happen in the comic. It's pretty brutal and it's pretty disgusting, and one of the absolute most disturbing moments in the entirety of Marvel Comics, which is really weird, again, considering the fact that it's a Spider-Man comic where this happens. But coming in at number four, and we're rapidly approaching the top three, like I said, Number one is twisted. Coming in at number four, we have one of my absolute favorite moments in Marvel Comics, which is Punisher killing Tiberiu in the Slaver story arc. Now, as you guys know from these list videos that we make, once we get to the top four, that's when we really start getting into the nitty gritty of this, right? So the whole idea behind the Slaver story arc is it's literally Frank Castle dealing with people that traffic other people. The one that's kind of behind all this is a guy named Tiberiu and the way that it's explained, this guy's Old Testament, man fire brimstone he's like just way back in the day how they used to do things he's one of the only characters that you see in garth ennis's punisher max that can actually go toe to toe with frank castle in terms of just violence and brutality but eventually frank castle gets a hold of this guy and frank castle realizes this guy is basically coming from eastern europe so what frank castle does is he ties this guy to a chair and he sets up a camera and literally just records the whole thing just hits the record button he doesn't really say a whole lot it's what he does that he realizes when it comes to those guys in that part of the world, actions speak louder than words. That if Frank Castle said stuff like, you guys can't come back here, I'm gonna kill you if you do, they wouldn't take him seriously. He uses Tiberiu as an example. He douses this guy in gasoline and sets him on fire in front of the camera and then just looks at the camera and says, don't come back here. It was insanely brutal and amazing. But continuing our trend with this list and talking about Frank Castle, let's get into the number three spot. Now, this was not Punisher Max, but was actually Marvel Knights the Punisher, which was also written by Garth Ennis, with a story called Vertical Challenge and Aim Low with issues 16 and 17. This is a story where basically Frank Castle kind of kills Wolverine as close as you can. The way this plays out, he blows off Wolverine's face with a shotgun, he hits him in the pencil with a baseball bat and smashes him, and then he blows them off using an Uzi. And then while Wolverine is just suffering and agonizing in pain, Frank Castle runs him over with a steamroller. It's pretty intense and the most Punisher Max thing ever. But now we get into the number two spot. We're rapidly approaching number one, which is dark. We get into the number two spot. This one's gonna be a little bit controversial, but I feel like this is certainly one of the darkest, disturbing, controversial moments, whatever, in Marvel Comics. 
basically anything from Maximum Carnage. Now, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with this story, this was not the first time that Carnage appeared in Marvel Comics, but it is the most violent. What made this so incredibly violent is that Carnage, the way he was depicted in this story was an answer to the question, what if the Joker got the Venom symbiote? How crazy would he be? What Carnage does over the course of this story until he's eventually caught up to by Spider-Man and Venom is Carnage will basically kill people and then use their blood and write maximum carnage on walls or carnage rules or different things like that. Sometimes he would even use his own blood, but it was just the level of hyper violence in this story that gives us a reason, or at least gives me a reason to put this at number two. People are being disemboweled. People are being eaten. People are just being killed in some of the most gruesome ways even in the early 1990s when this story was done, it was in a ridiculously violent story, and that's why I put it here at number two. But number one, nothing on this list that we've done so far is as disturbing or screwed up as the number one spot. This, again, comes from Marvel Ruins, and it's Emma Frost's cult. So what we learn here, and it's not a great big, huge, hyper-focal part of the story, that's one of the things you'll learn about Marvel Ruins, is it's basically things that you're told at either the end of the story, or it's just something mentioned in passing. But what we end up finding out here is that in the main Marvel Universe, Emma Frost has been a member of the Hellfire Club, that Emma Frost has led her own team called Generation X, which was like her version of the X-Men, more or less. She also led a team called the Hellions, who were basically destroyed, which is what led her to basically join the X-Men and lead Generation X in the first place. But in the Ruins universe, she's the leader of a cult. And what they do is because Emma Frost is so ridiculously wealthy, she goes to parents who are struggling financially and offers to buy their kids. And if the parents are okay with it, she'll purchase them and then give them like a huge amount of money. Then they take the kids and they just perform these experiments on them that are usually pretty gruesome to see if they can give them powers or to see if they have powers or something like that. It's dark and it's bleak and it's twisted. Cue demonetization from YouTube. <laughs> but it's a really, really, really dark and twisted thing. To see people, like human beings, just being treated that way, right? Being lobotomized or like their heads being cut open and all that kind of stuff. And just the look of misery and despair on their faces, it's more than enough to put this at the number one spot. Now there are some, some, thing, some moments out there from like Marvel Ruins and even like Earth X and stuff like that that are legitimate contenders for the number one spot. But honestly, I think this is probably the single darkest and most disturbing moment and the entirety of Marvel Comics. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.